Kiki Smith's first multimedia installation, Life Wants to Live, was presented at the kitchen in 1983. On cotton gauze, she painted sensational headlines and news items from the New York Post, reporting incidents of domestic violence, specifically of battered women who killed their aggressors in self-defense. Beside them, she showed CAT scans, x-rays, and readings of her cardiac and pulmonary functions, along with those of her artist friend David Wonorowicz, produced while they beat each other up. To the sights and sounds of the body's internal processes under stress, Smith added Landsat photographs of the earth. A film loop of body parts and landscape imagery was projected onto a second set of panels. Smith recognized the tragic dimensions of these violent events, but she called these murders a life-affirming decision. Just from a purely biological standpoint, at a certain point, your body wants to live. Life wants to live raised the question, who takes responsibility for both our intimate and social bodies? And it alluded to the complex medical, legal, and religious struggle for control of the body that became the primary subject of her later work. From the perspective provided by 18 years since that powerful debut, Life Wants to Live can be seen as a preview of Kiki Smith's approach to her subject as it reveals the components of a critical intelligence that has sustained one of the most remarkable careers in recent art. The Post headlines highlight the political and social awareness and commitment to change that underlie all of Smith's work. Readings of hers and David Wonorowicz's bodily functions preview the aspect of her work for which she is best known, an exploration of the human body and its most intimate functions, and ultimately the body as a whole, as she gradually came to engage the formidable tradition of figurative sculpture. Finally, this exhibition, in its juxtaposition of images of the earth with ones of the body, provides an early view of Smith's characteristic balance of the global with the personal, and the ability to convincingly transcend the individual to express the universal. Our retrospective view gives us a glimpse of the story that Smith has created, the implied narrative her work suggests when it is looked at altogether. That story, in part, is her own creation myth, an engagement with the body as her focus of the religious, literary, and art historical tales that have governed the way we perceive our origins and being. While that myth has the overall form of a Christian creation story, traveling a path from objection to redemption, it is important to understand that Kiki Smith's method is one of synthesis, incorporating elements ranging from ancient Egyptian and classical Indian to modern myths like that of Frankenstein, and including references to medicine and anthropology.